Hello, everyone. Welcome to PayPod. I'm your host, Jacob Hollibaugh. And today on the show, we are talking about the state of the modern hedge fund. As an on-again, off-again retail trader myself, I'm pretty excited to chat a bit about the world of investing, fund management, and all the new things coming to the infrastructure of that world. Join me to break down some topics surrounding this world and this industry is Kevin Fu, co-founder and CEO at Repool, the modern hedge fund launch and back office solution. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Jacob. Thanks for having me. Pleasure is all mine. Let's start off where the company itself started off. When and how did Repool come about? When was the original idea kind of conceived and what led you to that idea in the first place? Yeah, so we're about a two-year-old company and actually you're leading about being an enthusiastic retail investor of sorts. It's actually the origin story for the business. So the way I would talk about Repool is pretty close to what you said. We are more or less building modern back office infrastructure tools for fund managers, often first time in emerging fund managers. Originally though, in how we ended up here was my co-founder and I have a background in FinTech from the startup side. And we were really interested in helping retail traders actually behave more efficiently. In short, we kind of saw the rise of retail trading and infrastructure that, hey, you know what? A lot of this behavior actually looks like worse investors looking towards better investors, hoping to make like interesting ideas and then replicate them. And when you think about it, that's kind of like, money management with extra steps, right? You don't know if that person's any good and you don't really get a strategy and it's time consuming. And it's it's not really actually the behavior itself that's interesting. People just want to make money. I don't think they're in it because they like, you know, the actual act of trading for the most part. So we said, hey, what if you could actually connect the directly talented traders with the actual listenership and audience and drive more efficient market behavior? That'd be better for everyone because you could also monetize it the giver of ideas and advice. And it turns out that long story short, uh, you know, that's that's basically impossible from a regulatory perspective unless you have a hedge fund. So as tech people, that led us to ask the next question, which was, well, what does it actually take to bring down the barriers to entry and simplify the act of launching and operating a hedge fund? And that's how we essentially got started. Today, I wouldn't say we're necessarily retail oriented in any sense per se. We certainly still have people who a non-traditional background that are talented traders with interested investors who, you know, have used us to get a fund up and off the ground and running. But we also are just as equally, if not more focused on just people who would otherwise operate hedge funds. That could be investment advisors looking to launch a new fund vehicle. That could be a trader scout from an existing firm and so on. Gotcha. Interesting. So that kind of clarifies a little bit of something I assume that the the market overall for you know, like the market for your product may not have been there five, 10 years ago, but that the world of trading, the world of hedge funds, the opportunity for, like you said, more folks who kind of weirdly ended up in that position, but didn't have, couldn't get over the wall of actually being a hedge fund to do it the best way or the most appropriate way for people to view them, that this market has expanded in recent years. Has there been any other changes or has it basically been driven by this big influx of a bunch of retail traders, especially during the pandemic when we saw, you know, the Robin Hoods of the world and whatnot take off and everyone became a trader, everyone became an investor for good and for sometimes, oftentimes for, for poor. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that the market has expanded in a big way. Most of the hedge fund industry, which is very large, has been, uh, been pretty stable for a long time. I think, to your point, what's what's changed is technology has made it such that more people can enter. So there's like some modest democratization effect. I don't think the end state here is anyone and everyone who has been trading for any amount of time should be able to capital together, right? There's a reason this is a highly regulated space full of sophisticated operators. But I do think to your point, through modern tools and better software engineering, the landscape looks very different 15 years ago versus now in terms of what's possible, how you can drive operational leverage. You can operate a hedge fund with less staff. You can operate a hedge fund with less money. And that just means that smaller funds are possible. And that's kind of increased the bottom end of the market for sure. Yeah. And you reference, you know, you've kind of moved a little over to much more often for the emerging manager, which I think that is to me makes the most sense of the play of like those folks that are already within a fund that might be always have, you know, want to do it on their own, but the barrier to entry has previously been so 
abnormally big that they're going to stay where they're at forever. And they're not going to go try to out on their own and build a new one. And you're kind of offering to be able to help them do that. So for that emerging manager, what would be some like common misconceptions that they might have about the ability to launch a hedge fund on their own? Yeah. I mean, I think it's twofold. One is the cost, right? So in the vein of what you're just talking about, you certainly can spend a ton of money on operating and launching a hedge and if you're institutional, I mean, you easily spend hundreds of thousands or millions, but that's because there's a ton of complexity, both in terms of like the terms and also the structure, right? Onshore and offshore vehicles and tax blockers and all sorts of things that even I don't particularly understand to a great degree. But on the emerging manager side, you can actually get the fund cost down to be in the, you know, 20, 30, 40 K range per year. And it's basically just the math equation, right? So I think a lot of people think, oh, a hedge fund needs to be X minimum size, 50 million, 100 million. But for an individual manager or a pod of two or three people, it's basically just, okay, if the ongoing per year cost is X dollars, let's say 40K all in, then as a percentage of the fund, what's the minimum fund size where I can actually still make some money and still generate good returns? You're talking about single digit millions. And I actually think even in the past, a lot of notable hedge funds started with just single digit millions, got a great track record, and over the course of five, 10 years, really blew up and got large. So I think that the actual cost is not as big of a barrier for an emerging manager as people think. And the cost kind of scales with complexity, just like a company, right? If you're starting a startup, you wouldn't model it on the economics of Amazon and assume that you need, you know, hundreds of millions to get off the ground because you're just playing a different game and you know, you don't have to worry about some of those problems till later. The other is regulatory. I think people here launching hedge fund and they hear, you know, SEC and they start looking at the laws and there's a combination of both like fear and also like eyes glazing over looking at esoteric, you know, US codes and laws. And I think the good news is actually, it's actually pretty straightforward in most cases to launch a hedge fund. There is not a ton of hoops that you have to jump through. It's, it's basically once the path is revealed to you, you just walk along it. There's not like sudden challenges that arise along the way. In fact, most people don't even need to be licensed to be a hedge fund manager, there's something called being an exempt advisor. That's how most advisors start. So you don't have a FINRA license. You basically in some states could just start the process of launching a hedge fund tomorrow. You and I could start working on that right now together with no change, um, as long as we know what those barriers are and we can fit within them. And that's where Ripple comes into play, right? Is more than any other player, we're trying to parameterize and make very clear what the boundaries are. So it, it's not even that you come to us and we give you this kind of crash course on launching a fund, although we can, and that's part of it, but it's more that using technology in our platform, we say, okay, like if you launch a fund with us, I promise you, you'll do it the right way and we'll prevent you from doing things the wrong way. And you'll just kind of get through a launch. And then there's way less that you have to th think about. So I think that's the sum total, right? It's the cost and complexity. If I could actually imbue upon you to the knowledge that I have right now, I think you could just do logic a hedge fund. It would be a very not scary process. Yeah. And you referenced, you know, that the path isn't all as scary or changing as they might think. And what you're doing is basically showing them that path and kind of giving them the ability to like, it's, it's pretty straightforward and we can walk you right down it. Now, with all that, you mentioned, you know, at the beginning of that, the size doesn't need to be nearly as big as some folks may think. And I saw it mentioned both on your site and then in some of the blog posts from your site that I was reading that small funds do have a lot of advantages over traditional larger funds. Can you break down some of what those advantages that a smaller fund might have that might be make it more someone more inclined to venture out, even if they are starting in these single digit millions? Yeah, I mean, one of them ties to what we said, which would just be administrative and regulatory complexity. And the other would be basically the availability of certain strategies and the possibility of generating interesting returns or alpha. Uh, it basically becomes harder the more money you have. So on the first point, um, you know, if, if you're talking about a person who's trying to get the minimum viable economics to make this a full-time job or close to a full-time job, you basically just need the economics of the fund to be at replacement level for their job salary. And as we kind of talked about before, that doesn't need to be very large when you can be exempt in terms of cost. When you're exempt, as the term implies, you're specifically exempt from a lot of administrative and compliance burden that's ballooning the cost for larger managers. So one of the advantages, just you just don't have that much to deal with. In fact, I think you would be surprised 
at how little a fund manager has to do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, or month-to-month basis with only a couple intermittent pauses through the year to continue running their hedge fund in good standing with regulators. On the other hand, if you're a big fund and you have employees and you have multiple managers, you have all sorts of different licensure regimes, you have investors in foreign countries, you have really complicated LP relationships and legal agreements, um, you know, and you're registered with the SEC and possibly other regulatory entities, you're going to have a ton of complexity. So that's one, you can be lean and mean, and it's kind of like being a startup or a small business in general. The other um, is definitely the strategies, right? There are plenty of strategies that you can make interesting returns off of in 50 million, 100, 200 million dollar funds, but it becomes extremely hard, if not impossible to scale that strategy to half a billion, a billion plus. And the same thing happens, I think, broadly in venture as well, where the best performing venture funds are 50, 100, 200 million dollar funds. And none of these multi-billion dollar funds are delivering outsized 30, 40, 50% returns. So I think there's just more strategy availability. It's easier to find some small edge because the edge doesn't need to scale into hundreds of millions of dollars. And when you look at the biggest tests in the world with very, very, very few exceptions, there's kind of an inverse correlation between the size of the assets under management and the amount of alpha that those funds generate because it becomes harder and harder and harder as you acquire more and more assets. Yeah, certainly. So with your tools, specifically at Repool, you've touched on it a bit throughout, but I want to ask kind of directly here, what is it about your platform that you're able to do differently or better than incumbents in the space? Or is it possibly that there isn't really incumbents in the space doing what you do? What makes kind of stands you out from the competition? Yeah, I mean, certainly there's a lot of incumbents, right? It's just that the biggest difference is there are principally services businesses that are human driven. And there are advantages to that model and there are reasons why that model has persisted. But whenever you have a structurally human and services oriented business, what you basically never get is interesting operational or technological leverage or workflow for the actual end user, right? Because everything is being done in spreadsheets and email and with offshore teams and running through lots of different people. And so I I think it's less that we're doing something radically different at the core, right? Like at the end of the day, a compliance firm does your compliance, an accounting firm does the accounting, but it's how can we abstract away more and more of that from the actual fund manager? And how can we make the times when they do have to touch it easier, faster, and more delightful? So I'll give a simple example, right? I mean, One is that hedge funds have a lot of paperwork. There is a very complex set of documents that have to be created when you form the fund. Those have to be distributed to prospective investors. Ongoing notices and disclosures have to be delivered to those investors. And then those investors themselves, when they come into the fund, they need to provide a ton of information. They need to fill out a bunch of esoteric forms. And then they're going to start receiving like Excel spreadsheets and financial statements. It's all very archaic. And you can take a lot of that data and really simplify it so that instead of taking, you know, weeks to fill out a 50 page legal document that looks scary and is kind of hard to understand, it's more like modern consumer grade experiences we have come to expect in other areas, right? So you digitize it, you simplify it, but you still achieve the same outcome. In a similar vein, I mean, 20 years ago, if you were opening a brokerage account as a retail trader, you would literally fill out like stacks of paperwork and you would attack like scans of your ID and proofs of address. And it was a whole ordeal. And nowadays, you know, largely thanks to Robinhood, which a lot of people don't know, that's kind of the area they are most innovative on, aggressively digitizing the onboarding and verification processes. Now, signing up for a brokerage on most brokerages, the retail trader is something that you can do in 10 minutes sitting at a computer with no help. And that's a very parallel story to, I think, a lot of the surface area that hedge funds can have. You can make it easier to interact with every part of the plumbing. Right. And so that you ideally forget that it's there. And then when you do touch it, you have, you know, it's just, it's just much simpler. Yeah. And that's certainly a, a common theme that comes up on this show and is one of the many kind of overarching themes of this show is throughout the financial world and definitely in the investment world being one of them, just kind of the things that wouldn't have been accessible to the common person, the mass market is slowly but surely all of the technology and the digitization of everything breaking down all these barriers to let more people in and as more people are able to access all these tools and all the parts of the financial world 
there's new companies like yourself that are able to come in and how can we make this transition easier? How can we help them out and not just serve the super big company that's been around for a long time and is the the reason we're still filling out the 50 page paper in person because they want to keep that barrier to entry. They don't want the company to come in and change how that's done. The other, the main thing, referencing kind of the themes of this podcast, the main, at the end of the day, if I boiled this whole show down to one thing, it is the movement of money and just financial infrastructure in total. So you are, as you mentioned, touching a bunch of points or that fund manager is touching a bunch of different partners through that you're trying to help them facilitate how efficiently that happens a little more. So for my, you know, my banking partners that might be listening, my payments folks that might be listening, I've got to ask, does anything you're doing, it's bringing all these benefits to the fund manager themselves. Does it bring any benefits to any of those other partner organizations, those other touch points on the other side? Do they get anything out of this? Any benefits derived from the hedge funds operating? in a better way thanks to your software? Yeah, I mean, I think indirectly, and I, I think there are interesting things we do on the money movement and banking side. I think the benefit to our banking partners, and we do have embedded banking in our app, which is not typical. Usually you would go and get your own third-party bank and for regulated entities like hedge funds, especially this year, but with all the turmoil on the regional banking and the venture blowups, it's, it's time-consuming and hard. Uh, but But you know, the benefit for our partners is more clients and access to an interesting base of related possible clients, right? The interesting thing about a hedge fund and its network of investors is essentially you're dealing with a relatively high net worth cohort of people, not just the manager as a typical banking client that parks money from time to time, often in high amounts, but, you know, all of the hedge funds investors who by definition have to be some of the wealthier individuals in the country. And so I think for partners like banks, the incentive is, you know, the faster we can set up a hedge fund, the easier we can make it for the hedge fund to be successful, raise more money. And the more hedge funds that we can allow to thrive and exist, those are all just more clients generally that participate in that, you know, orthogonal financial plumbing, such as banking. Yeah, makes sense. As you look forward with the company, are there any other big software opportunities you see for the hedge fund back office infrastructure space that maybe you haven't tapped into yet or are hoping to be able to tap into the further this company goes? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the reality is, is we're very early in our journey and there's mostly things that we haven't done rather than things we have. I think one way to look at the journey for repo, which is probably not all too different from other financial institutions is or, or challengers is once you get parity to the incumbents, ideally faster than it took them to get there, then you have a really interesting foundation that you can build on top of. And that's when things get exciting. And we're doing a bit of that, but we're still also very much in the foundation mode. I think two, three, four years from now, we want to primarily just be building software. So if we're 100% sure that Repo can do the things you would get from a traditional services business, but we also have all this interesting data, we want to make it easier for fund managers to fundraise. We want to make it easier for them to get set up and get access to analytics and tooling. You know, as an example, one of the things we do is called fund admin. It's one of the most important back office services. We basically are the source of truth for all the transaction data of a fund manager across all of the brokerages and their cash, basically anything they do with the money, we are actually the source of truth on. And so an obvious extension of that is you actually can provide really interesting data to the hedge fund manager. Where are you making money? Where are you losing money? You know, how are your trades actually kind of comparing to each other compared not only to your own historical performance, but the indices, to other traders. Every hedge fund right now has spreadsheets upon spreadsheets that are crazy, multiple tabs and crazy formulas built by really, really smart people because they're trying to manually do this because the traditional admin doesn't really step into that arena. And so that's like an example of something that we think we're in a particularly good position to provide people with. But also from the investor side, I think as an investor in a private fund general, Early. the experience is very archaic. You basically fill out a legal form and then once a month you get like a PDF that has a bunch of numbers that you don't really care about. And that's it. That's like the whole totality of how you interact with the fund. And you can really make that a much better experience in terms of the speed at which you give them data, the robustness of the data you supply them, um, and then also facilitating more frequent communications between LPs and managers, right? One of the tough things about being a fund manager is every investor is a stakeholder and it's kind of like a one-to-many relationship. So it can be frustrating both ways. For the manager, it's a lot of communication burden. And for the investor, it can be hard to get in touch with the manager and get the information you see because it's just one, two, three guys or gals 
that are responsible for not just trading and operating the fund, but also handling inquiries and stuff. So my, my point here is I, I think anywhere you point in the back office stack of a hedge fund, there's area that software can be interesting either on a very small operational level or from a fundamental workflow level. And so, um, yeah, in short, I think kind of everywhere is, is where we're looking to improve. Well, that's uh, opportunity everywhere is a good place to be. And it seems like you've built a really great foundation to continue building on top of. Kevin, this has been a real pleasure for those listening who may want to follow you and your story, may want to learn more about Repool, where would be the best place for them to go to find you? Yeah, so we obviously have a Twitter and then I think our site has essentially the ability to sign up and follow our updates. We try to be a company that is very thoughtful about the information we push out because we know that a lot of companies just push out random stuff for the sake of it. So if anyone is interested in considering their own fund or learning about one for their future reference, we're always happy to chat. Wonderful. We will link to those and more in the show notes below. I appreciate the time and knowledge, Kevin. Hope to talk again sometime soon. Jacob, it's been a pleasure.